unmute this. All right, hello everybody, and welcome here to episode eight, I think it is, of the Brawl for All Pro Wrestling Show. And I'm Jeff Jarris, as always, your host, and this is Jeff Crow, well, and usual co host. And uh, yeah, it's been a while since our last episode, but uh, had kind of a few things happen. Um, Jeff's dad passed away, which uh, we were all, I was close to him too, so. Uh, it's been a long time since we've been able to get back into the thing, swing of things and get an episode made. So if anybody was wondering why it's been so long, that's it. And I wanted to say sorry to Jeff on right here about his dad, and it just sucks. So, um, But hopefully you. doing this stuff like this will help you out, man. Yeah. Um, Steven's grandpa died too not too long ago, so it's been weird. What's up, Steven? We got you with us too today on the phone. Yeah. Yeah, what's up, man? So it's good to have all three of us here. Um, yeah. So, to start episode 8 off, I thought since uh, TLC just happened, we go through and just comment on TLC real quick. How's that sound? Sounds Good to me. Okay. So, um, I'm just going to say right now, they kicked off um, TLC with that impromptu ladder match because it wasn't even scheduled, was it? No. Uh, Harper and uh, Harper Ziggler. and Ziggler. They just put it, I don't think it was like scheduled for the pay-per-view, was it, Steven? You know what? I I, I don't think it was, but anyway, to start it off, they had the best match of the night, in my opinion. Like they started it off with Ziggler and Harper. They threw two really young lion guys out there that are hungry, and like, yeah. what did they think was going to happen? They knew they were going to go out there and try to steal the show. I think it was a bad mood to throw that match out there first. What do you guys think? Yeah. No. Although it was the match of the night by far, and they could, but it just was nobody could follow it up after that, in my opinion. Yeah, once uh, I mean the match ha happened, you knew it was pretty much you know the rest of the show was. Gonna it was like who's going to follow that up after that? I mean, I mean, we, thought maybe Wyatt and Ambrose, but Wyatt and Ambrose did it was a good did match. a good job following it up, no but way. they were that, there was no way any of these other matches was going to follow it up, is what I'm saying. No, you agree, Stephen? Yeah, and I think it's, it's hard to have a TLC match when there's no title on the line because. The ladder doesn't really make sense in the match, you know. What I mean? Yeah, what is what is the point of a TLC match with no belt on the line? Uh, I don't really understand that either. Just want to keep the pay per view around. Anything they do really. I did think it was a good thing that they threw Ambrose and Wyatt on last and had him the main event though, because that should have been the main event match. Yeah. But I think right before that they should have done the ladder match between Ziggler and Harper if they were going to do it because they knew like. I, I don't know, man. I'd even put that on last because, like, who's unless gonna fall that up? Uh, unless they weren't sure about Harper, but man, uh, Harper put on. They knew Ziggler would. So, what would you Harper say, Stephen? That was probably one of the best matches of the year. Yeah, that was a really good match. I was, really do agree. Like, they should have knew that. Um, like, know that they were gonna try to steal the show. I mean, because it was like the next few matches were really like lackluster. Yeah, we had the just just to be on the subject. We had the Usos and San, Sandow and the Miz, which they um, Usos won by disqualification. That was lackluster. Weren't you falling asleep? I think I was falling asleep during <laughs> most of this pay per view. I don't know if that was You're that. Yawning. No, no, that was that was the. Uh, that was the Raw before, I think. No, but I'm pretty sure dude, it's been like the best sleep asleep during all of them. I think the Raw's been the best <laughs> sleeping pill there's been lately. Yes. Anyway, Big Show, Eric Rowan, the stairs match was cool. I, I mean, I mean, it, it yeah. didn't even compare to the ladder match, but you got, but that spot where he did that with the stairs at the end and hurt Big Show legitimately was cool. They did a decent job. I didn't think it was going to be that good. I didn't think it was going to be that great of a match either, but it surprised yeah. me for what it was. <laughs> what did you think of that match? Yeah, I mean, you know, so much with the Bears, and, and those, I mean, okay, those two guys are fine, but, like, together, they really kind of had a hard time getting a good match. At yeah. Each other. They, good thing they had thrown in those stairs, because that would really suck. Yeah. <laughs> so, like yeah. we said, like, nothing really followed it up at all. No. Um, they had the tables match with uh, Rollins and Cena, yeah. which I thought was pretty lackluster for just a tables match. But what I couldn't believe was that uh, 
like I, I don't know. They got so many people involved in that match, but you didn't see Lesnar in this match. I thought that'd be the match that he would have came back in if he was going to come back in that. Right. And not the next match afterwards. But then we saw the same spot that he did to Orton with the yeah, top rope table. That's all he's been F5. doing lately in the gimmick matches. Did you notice that, Steven? It was the same move he did on Orton in the last pay-per-view. Oh, what? Okay, was it? Well, no. You mean with Cena? Cena, yeah. Yeah, he, he did, gave him the AA off the top. I keep calling it the F5. F5 okay. or F5. I didn't see that on the last pay-per-view, but that's... It's crazy how he did the same thing. I don't understand why they did the same exact move. He should know that. He I thought it was like that. the second time he's done it on Rollins, too. <laughs> yeah, it could have been. Mm -hmm. But the match was not very memorable, in my opinion. I just, no. that feud sucks. Like, yeah. and if you look at it, I, I remember they were thinking it like going with an Orton feud with uh, Rollins. But yeah. now they say when he gets back, Orton, he's going to be going against Kane. I wonder if they're just like, Rollins just doesn't have it. Yeah, yeah I, I don't know. I love Rollins, but he, what, he lost the TLC, right? Yeah. He yeah, lost against Cena in the match we just talked about. Well, he had two guys helping him, and then he loses. It's like, okay, if he can't win, like, three-on-one, then he's going to lose his confidence out of the guy. Super Cena. Cena never loses. <laughs> he, never, he never loses. That's, to me, that's a problem. Yeah, I mean, he can't lose. Like, <laughs> he's the only guy on the roster I know of that they just are so scared of him losing a match because they just think the thing's going to go downhill if he loses the match. Uh, yeah, I don't It's that bad. It. It's yeah, getting that bad. The roster is that terrible. And, and I agree with you there. It could be a lot better. Oh, it could be ten times better. <laughs> So, yeah. actually going on from there, um, I think it was just a bunch of non, we don't even need to talk about really anything except for the last match, which was Ambrose and uh, Wyatt and the TLC, because all the other matches after that were pretty much unmemorable, unmemorable. in my opinion. Yeah. So, um, I'm going to say, though, that Ambrose... Like, they knew they had to go out there and try to top that first slider match, so I thought they did a pretty good job on that. Yeah. Had some good spots and stuff, so. That last yeah. elbow drop on the table like the, was pretty. It's hard to bring oh, that elbow drop on the table was really good. Was yeah. That was pretty good. That table didn't give it no. first. It was, yeah. It, yeah, it legitimately looked like it hurt pretty good on the hip. No. Like it, he hit it, but it didn't. It didn't collapse. So that was pretty much TLC. So what do you guys think overall on the TLC? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, no WWE championship match. Which is really weird to have a any kind of pay per view without a title match, in my That's opinion. That's what I was thinking the whole time. You know what I mean? Like they just gotta get it off Lesnar, man. They really do. I agree. Yeah. Like, right. he's, if he would come back and, you know, be in, like, the black trunks and all that, I think it'd be cool, but, like, he comes out in, like, this, you know, like, MMA gear, and it just doesn't look, he doesn't look intimidating like he used to. And that's just my opinion, you know, because he comes out in gloves. And he just, to me, it's kind of tacky. Yeah. I think his old look was was better than the MMA look, but I know why he's doing that is just because so when he goes back to MMA, he does, I don't know. I guess he just thinks people think of him as, think of him as an MMA, MMA guy. guy. Yeah. See, I think he's doing it because his legs have, like, shrunk. Eh. I think they really have. I think his legs are probably about half the size they were, so he can't really come out and shrunk and be like that old leather. He does have some skinny little bird legs, it looks like. Yeah, huh? it's, it's, it's his upper body's so big. It's... Yeah, that yeah. might be a problem, too. His upper body's so damn big now. He's just not roided out like he used to be. No. In my opinion, he was on steroids or something. So No, because he doesn't want to have that much muscle when he goes back. 
UFC if he does. Okay, but why didn't they use Brock at the pay-per-view if they're going to use him the next night? In my opinion, I think Brock could have came out during that match with uh, Cena and Rollins and got Rollins a win. Yeah. Yeah. And gave him, like, a legitimate excuse. I know. Book around his schedule. They do have to book around his schedule. And now I also heard there was a rumor that he's not even scheduled for the Raw before the Rumble. They said no, they put him back on there. Actually. Okay, they actually put him back on yeah, there. I read that earlier, it, so I'm yeah. glad you guys both read that. But. Yep. Okay, but that was TLC, and I think it was lackluster. Like, three stars best just because that match between Ziggler and Harper was really good. Yeah. I thought. I the best way to sum it up was it's worth nine ninety nine for the entire month if you get that pay-per-view. I mean, imagine if you had to pay 60 bucks for that pay-per-view. Yeah, could you imagine? I I said that on my last episode. Like, I I, I feel sorry for anybody who paid sixty bucks for that. Yeah, that yeah was, that's sad. that's just a complete rip off, and WWE has to know it. Yeah, I, I feel like the network's kind of like they're lacking on pay per views because they're just they're, they're giving you what they're getting, you know, money wise. They could have so much more content on there too, though, than what they do. Yeah. Oh man. Yeah, that's another. Why is it only the Monday Night Wars their only show? Like they could have like, a ton. Like, like you said, do another, do another Legends House. Get some younger guys in there, please. I just hope and pray that somebody listens to some of the stuff that we say, like they say they do, because, like, really, do another Legends House on WWE yeah. Network oh, with well, some good legends this time, and not have your headliner be Roddy Piper and a bunch of scrubs. Because you're going to yeah. throw freaking Hillbilly Jim in there as a legend. I mean, come on. Oh, Tony yeah. Atlas isn't a legend. That's that's right. Right. Boy, that really... Well, all Legends House did was show how lazy <laughs> Tony Atlas was. Like, uh, that son of a yeah. bitch. I couldn't even watch it. It was so terrible. Yeah, like, they were too old. Like, the average age of those guys was, like, 70. Like, they need to throw in, like, Sandman. Dude, I'd love to see, like, Hogan, Flair. That would be good. Austin. I mean, throw in all the big names in there. See what happens. That'd be hilarious, dude. Yeah. Like, yeah, you know, maybe like an ECW guy. And another thing is, I was really liking the Monday Night War thing, but I think they've gotten to a point now. They're just repeating things. Yeah, the, the, the one with the Sting and like Undertaker, where it kind of like shows them as like the cornerstone. Yeah, we already like, saw all that. We already saw Ooh. all that. Like. <laughs> They did. They just repeated themselves like the last three episodes is all they've done. I haven't watched the click one yet, though. I did. How's that? It's about the same. They're just they repeating use, stuff. Yeah, they repeat it again. Like, it was so good till like, I mean, four they had A little bit, but it was from stuff that had already been on. It was like... It's been so good up to, like, the last two episodes. Uh, they've overstayed their welcome. Yeah, like, the Monday Night War needs to end. Like, it's time to do an invasion. I want to see, like, one on the invasion. Yeah. When they finally yeah. bought WCW out. And why don't they just do a little... Because that was still Monday Night War. They need to just do, like, a closing to it, you know? Yeah. They need to do a closing show of the last Nitro and um, the invasion, I think. Keep yeah. going unless they're going to go super sorry. To super I mean, they're star, just going, like, yeah, the click now. I mean, didn't they already talk about the click when they did one on, like, didn't they do one on HPK? They'll probably have DDP. We're going to show DDP on his journey to yoga. Yeah. <laughs> Jeez. Through the Monday night. Well, I thought Raw was better the next night than uh, TLC, if you guys ask me. Oh, it definitely was. Um, you had Jericho as Raw as Jericho being the general manager. Man, I could just t I'll take him being J GM every week. Yeah, he'd be good. Did you watch uh, Raw, Steven? Yeah, I, I watched it. Struggled to get through it like always. Dude, we struggled bad to get through it like the last probably <laughs> month. So we feel you. But the only good thing about it was that I did like you know Jericho being the GM and he booked the match with the fans voting on who on what stipulation was for uh, him and Heyman as Heyman came out as like the mouthpiece for Brock. Oh, but we didn't you knew what was going to happen. You didn't see Brock at the beginning though, no. You knew that was going to happen though. Um, we went on to have some pretty lackluster matches. Big Show and Harper beat uh, Rowan and uh, Ziggler. 
which I like I like we said I don't even barely remember the match. Yeah, I know. Um we had Alicia Fox and Natalia. Uh def- did they tag team? I think they did. Yeah, uh, they beat the Bella Twins. Yeah, um, the Natty sleep. Natty actually tapped her out to the oh, sharpshooter. Yeah, I was probably sleeping by then. Uh we had the Rusev deal. Yeah. With Jericho. Um, what do you guys think of Rusev, Rusev anymore? I said Russo, but what do you think of Rusev, guys? Like, man, I want to see him just... Actually, I think it's a good storyline if they have, like, Cena beat him at Mania and have him undefeated till then. But, man, if they keep him going past Mania undefeated, it's getting ridiculous. Like, Yeah, I don't know. What... <laughs> I don't like the Ryback um, feud really that much. And didn't they have something on SmackDown where Ryback's supposedly hurt now? No, I... I think so. I'm not sure exactly what happened. Um, but yeah, Ryback got involved in that and everything. But yeah, as we know, that that on the SmackDown the following night, like he came out and injured Ryback. So I don't know what's going on. There's some kind of storyline going on there. Um, I'm not really enjoying that feud that much. I haven't really enjoyed anybody's feud with him really that much, to tell you the truth. I think Swagger was cool, but they can't keep doing him. Yeah. They 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 dropped the ball on the swagger. They could have kept that going for a while there. I thought. Oh, I know, but yeah. keep having. It's him always lose. it's always good to look at Lana, Lana or Lana or whatever, however you say it. Though yeah. I mean, come on, yeah. she's got to be one of the best looking chicks they've ever had. Best bodies I've ever seen on a diva. Definitely. Oh, yeah. Yeah, she's freaking hot. Bruce is he's he's missing something, and I don't I don't know what it is. I just think he's just. Yeah, he's not got quite like he ain't got a super. He ain't no like superstar. Charisma, he's like, just he's just a hill, a big hill. Yeah, no charisma. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I don't know. He's just missing like maybe some top no. moments or something. He just keeps fighting like mid card guys. I liked the rock oh. rub that he got. Yeah, I don't know if it's yeah. his gimmick. I don't know if it's not. It's, the bad thing about like anybody who comes in contact with the rock, he always like. Him the worst he can. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, he really does. He puts him down so bad that people are like, he's a joke now. Like, I can name, like, Rusev, and then the Booker T thing, whenever he got in the ring, like, who are you? And then, like, Chris Jericho made his intro. I'll never forget him calling CM Punk Popeye on crack. <laughs> that was great. That's what he does look like. Yeah, anyway, so. Some good stuff. Him and Punk's feud was funny. Yeah. Oh, you think the whole punk thing is a storyline? No, but you, do you remember the beginning of the year when he did quit and, like, Shadis was like, oh, it's a work. I'm like, well, I don't think it's a work. I, I really do think he's literally, like, done. I did, too. He said he was. Yeah. Because like, we talked about did. that on the Pro Wrestling Rush when we had that, yeah. Yeah. Which you can go back and listen to, by the way. Weekly Pro Wrestling Rush. It's on my channel. It's one of my favorites. <laughs> he said he really <laughs> thought he, he wasn't sure, but... I really legitimately think Punk quit for real. Like, yeah. And the UFC thing, I don't. Yeah. I don't see it being a WWE thing. Yeah, man. I don't know how he's gonna do there, but whatever. Yeah, I don't either. But on back onto Raw, just to go through it: New Day versus Goldust yeah. and Stardust. The New Day one. Now, this is something we've been wanting to talk about. New Day. Yeah. What is the point? Like. They waited so long just streaming it out, streaming it out. We thought it was going to be a new nation of domination or whatever. And then they have these vignettes where they're all like dancing around. Like it was funny. James, Xavier Woods was yeah, like James was... Brown. They have these people, choir behind him singing. They're all up energy dancing. Yeah, Every right. one of them was talking. It was pretty comical. But then when they debut, they don't even say nothing. They just come out there like dance. I hate this thing like this. This is uh, Biggie Langston just like this the whole time, like with that towel. Uh, I hate that shit, man. Here, but I got a towel. They need to turn him hill. Stop doing that, Biggie. God, it sucks. If it's the new day, I wish it was over like already because boy, that's horrible. Then they got him in the colors of the body dawn as like. <laughs> I have no words to explain how horrid the gimmick is. Like the clothing, the song. <laughs> the, the, and you just already named it. Like, they didn't even come out and say anything. They're like, they had promos. 
then all of a sudden when they made their debut, it was like, they just come down the ring. <laughs> it's like, oh, okay. Yeah, it, it gets pretty stupid after a while. And what I thought initially was that the whole thing was going to be like a black preacher type gimmick. And like the debut, mm. you'd have like the whole choir come out on stage and whatnot. And it'd be some yeah, big you, deal. You'd think that they would be in the ring talking like, you know, we're going to run the company and do like a preaching gimmick. But they're not even doing that. They're just like, no. uh, just wrestling and stupid looking gear and and they're I like playing. They're doing some kind of rock paper scissor thing, like to who gets to wrestle. Yeah. And, oh my gosh. Big E was even talking like he was like some reverend I, before I, I, the gimmick. Yeah, Big E always did talk like he was some kind of reverend. But they yeah, aren't even letting him talk though, so no, that's what I don't like yeah, about I, the whole thing. It's just like, why did you guys wait so long? It took you guys this long to brainstorm this shit. Like, the new day, well, another. Where they wanted to get a group of them together, like, you know, like... A militant you know, like black force, yeah, like the nation. Right, but then I didn't think they were going to do, like, a choir group that does... Well, honestly, I think the whole thing, the Brown case and stuff, and Ferguson has something to do with that. They were like, do we really want to do the race card right now? Yeah, yeah you might be right, man, because you know how definitely he is. They will take that into, like, consideration. Well, especially since they're never, a pub never, publicly never. traded company. Plus, they were in St. Louis, right? Right and by the... Had, yeah, they were right was, there, dude. They, so, yeah, yeah, they couldn't have done that. But they did debut them on Black Friday, which I think is funny. Yeah. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, did you notice that? They debuted them on SmackDown on Black Friday. Okay, you know but... They should put Truth in there. Yeah, Truth needs to be in there, in my opinion. Just put all the black guys on the roster on there. I thought Truth and Mark Henry were going to be like the two main people. Yeah. They would be both great in there, man. Mm -hmm. Have a five-man faction. That'd be sweet, man. Well, yeah, Mark Henry was Henry's in the original like, nation. Do nation. that. If you're listening to events. We had Kane and Adam Rose. I don't even know the point of that match. What's Adam hey, Rose okay. doing anyway? All right. He was feuding with the rabbit. He was feuding with Rose, but... Right. right. And all of a sudden, the bunnies in his group, like, nothing's going on, like, we're all good. And then, like, they totally, like, squash the bunny, and then Adam Rose is still, like, buddies with the bunny. Like, yeah, what's um, up? They just drop the whole bunny gimmick. Yeah. It's what? like, it's like we're going to have Sami Zayn be the bunny. Oh, wait a minute. Sammy's going to win the title, and we're going to drop the bunny. The bunny thing. Well, I think Kane is going to... I think you're going to attack him again. It's uh, going to be somebody. I uh, think the bunny. Uh, <laughs> it's going to be gonna somebody be debuts. Dude, Marcus Louis. It's going to be Marcus Louis, dude. It's going to be Marcus Louis. <laughs> dude, have you seen him? Who is it? Marcus Louis from NXT. He's going nuts like Kane used to. I don't know if you saw him. He hasn't no, been on there. He wasn't on. Uh, he ran out. He left. On Revolution, he wasn't on. No. He ran left. Yeah, he ran out and left. They're like, what is he going to do? I think and then Jeff said and... Jeff said that they had Kane doing the same thing. Acting on a, kind of similar way. On a SmackDown, like people were making fun of him. Oh, wow. Well, I'd like to see that, what happens there. Dude, I mean, he's the bunny, man. Um, then we had the Jericho Heyman deal where Brock came out, blocked the old... Uh, which was cool because he breaker. blocked the code breaker and then hit him with an F5 and raised his arms on the way out. So it resulted in a no contest. I thought that was a cool way to bring Brock back. Jericho didn't even yeah. phase him. It, it gave him a good rub off Jericho, you know, yeah. top guy. Right, yeah. And it set up a good thing for, like, they tried to make you think that that was it, but you knew that wasn't going to happen. Nah, if he was there. Oh, mm -hmm. did, did you see that, like, they had a whole Fandango deal as he celebrated with, like, uh, Jericho Slammy Award or something like that. And then they had Reigns come out, um, drop him with a Superman punch and a spear. And then he went to, oh, and then Big Show went to cut him off. <laughs> and then Reigns ended up knocking him out, right? I think so. I think so, yeah, yeah. I can't really remember, but... Yeah, anyway, Ryan show ended up throwing thing. some stairs and stuff. For the, anyway, you know, Reigns comes out and does the same stuff as always, but that was his first time, like, getting physical, right? How about his T-shirt? Since he's been back. Yeah, he's got that new T-shirt that looks exact. Yeah. Now, Steven, you know, you're a f comic fan. Did that not look like the Spider-Man symbol? Yeah, I kind of thought that, but then I realized that it was, like, a 
thought the same thing, but I didn't really put much thought into it. But you're right. You Man, know? it looks just like it, just a little bit modified. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I even pulled it up as soon as we were watching, and I was like, looks just like the Spider-Man symbol from the movie. The Tobey Maguire uh, series. Yeah, it looked... Oh, it really looks... Really close. Yeah, it's real close, especially to, like, when he was black Spider-Man with yeah. the black and white. But I like the shirt look better than that vest. I hope they let him keep wearing the shirt. I think he's kind of got a gut or something, man. Like, they won't uh, yeah, let him take like his it. shirt off. Yeah. Not confident in his body or something, the way it looks. Got that Samoan gene in them, so man, they can get heavy. Yeah, like the rock. Either, dude, they're either like really sculpted and huge, or they got like big butts and like huge thighs. Yeah, <laughs> Umaga, rest in peace, <laughs> but he was no cool. Watch, I bet when the Usos get older, they'll blow up. I just think it's funny too. how they're all related. They're all yeah. related. You're right. They're all related. Yeah, they all <laughs> yeah Rock's my cousin, yeah. Are you Samoan? Yeah. Cousins with Rock. I told you, yeah, in, like the, I was in the military, they all... Everyone was related. Yeah, Jeff said when he was in the military, the Samoans were all related, they said, like... <laughs> Everywhere I go. It's a like, small, like, cousin. island, so it's, oh, like, my. everybody's cousins oh, and my. shit. Like, Man, are you all cousins? Uh, pretty much. Same last name. Yeah. 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 No, a lot of them different last names, but they were just, just so probably. going on from that. We had the Miz and M Miz Dow, and he took on Jimmy Uso, which is kind of uh, I mean, Jimmy Uso ended up winning, but so stupid. But I do want to comment how Uso slapped the shit out of Miz a couple weeks back, man. I don't yeah, know if you saw like it, Steven. Did you? Yeah, that looked like it hurt, man. Man, was that <laughs> legit? Like, Jack fuck, yeah. dude, he just. <laughs> Yeah, he about slapped them out of his shoes, dude. I don't think Miz <laughs> could whip his ass is the problem. No. <laughs> that was concussion video. Dude, he hit him hard. I wonder if he got in trouble. I never heard nothing about it, though, but I wasn't really on the dirt sheets or anything. Yeah, that was like near slap, too, pretty Did much. anybody say anything about that? or? I didn't see anything, but... I, I didn't see nothing on the dirt sheet about that. And they, took right? Jimmy, and they took Jimmy and Naomi off of uh, Total Divas. Yeah. For some reason, I guess they said they had too many married couples on there because they already have uh, Cena and, or I mean Daniel Bryan and they're gonna make it more interesting. Natty and Tyson and Daniel and Bree. So they're like, we already got too many married couples. We don't need Naomi and Jimmy. And I think the whole a angle with Miz and Naomi, like trying to be an actor, is so stupid. Miz can't act his way out of a paper bag, like. But he's out there trying to get people jobs. And I bet Jimmy's just pissed at the whole, like, sexual innuendo, like, of the whole thing. It seems like, to me, like, maybe he really pissed him off that night and he came out there and jab slapped his ass. But, you know, Miz has Maurice, like, married to her, so he's like, why does he need yeah. Naomi? Like, Yeah, why does he need Naomi? So that hard of a slap, I, I want an explanation for that. <laughs> One of the episodes, he was all jealous about the angle that she that was, was supposed to be doing. Maybe he is jealous about it. I don't know. Yeah, he went to one of the writers and said he wanted, or the creative team, and said he wanted it changed. Hmm. And she got all mad. Wow. Well, to end off uh, Raw, we had the cage match with uh, Cena and Rollins. Um, overall, I thought the cage match kind of just sucked up until the point that uh, Brock got involved. Yeah. When he came out and laid out Cena and uh, just kind of allowed Rollins to take the curb stomp and take the victory. And uh, then uh, him and Heyman with the handshake at the end. So do you guys think that he's a new Heyman guy, or what's going on here? You know, I, here's what I think, okay? He, he's kind of like joined Heyman. What I think is going to happen is Cena beats Brock Lesnar for the title of Royal Rumble, and then Seth Rollins comes in to cash in and lays bank. That's why. I... I think that's what's gonna happen. That's a good possibility. You think they? I think they do want to get the strap off Brock before Mania now. Yeah, they do. Because I don't think they think he's gonna resign. So yeah. yeah, they're already they're telling like merchandise, like whatever shirts they started on for him, do them on Sheamus instead. Right, I heard that. Too. I heard that. Like they even put a halt to doing any kind of merchandise or anything. Yeah. Well, 
Wow. But then they, but I read that then now they're gonna release it again after Mania. So man, I know it's I gonna know. be interesting to see if he goes to UFC or if he signs with WWE. It sounds like yeah. it's leaning more towards the UFC the way it. I don't know, but that's what it sounds like to me too. But you never know. But what'd you think of that whole ending? That was pretty good Raw, in my opinion. The ending was great. It made yeah. Raw better than uh, the TLC, in my opinion. Yeah. So. Bottom yeah. line. That was a pretty solid Raw. Anyway, uh, I wanted to comment, though, that the NXT Revolution TakeOver special was awesome, man. Yeah. They're, yeah, they're better than Raw. And NXT is better than Raw. I don't care. I mean, I've heard <laughs> the people saying it, and it's true, like... I guess the WWE locker room is even mad because they said that the show looked so much was so much better than TLC or anything yeah. that they've done, and they're mad because like they don't have the freedom. It seems like that NXT guys do no, to go out there and right. just go all out and put on a show. It's more character driven and entertainment wise when you're up on the main roster, I guess. Yeah. I guess WWE guys are wanting to have it kind of the same, um, you know. You know what I mean. They want to have the same mentality on Raw yeah. and have the same freedom that the guys on NXT are doing. They think they're just right. as good, the roster, but they just aren't getting the chance. Yeah, so, exactly. But Kevin Owens right. is legit, they like can... we said. Prince Debit coming out with uh, the paint was awesome. That I was, guess yeah, they're, they're going to let him continue doing that now for, for now on. That was cool. Uh, that was awesome. They were. They guessed that the plan was for him to only do it with special appearances, but then I guess Vince or Trips, after they saw it, they want him to keep doing it like all the time, which I think might be a mistake. I think it would have been cooler to kind of have him just do it on special appearances. Special yeah. appearances, but then if he does it on special appearances, when should he do it? Only on pay-per-views, in my opinion, or if it's a special yeah. or something like that. Yeah, then I, hopefully they put him in pay-per-views. Oh, he will be. But they don't have that many, though. Yeah. But I, I just think it's going to water it down if he does something every time. Oh, yeah. Every night, yeah. I think it will, yeah. So we'll see how that goes. Unless he can really switch it up every time where you're like, I wonder what he's going to look like this time. Oh, yeah. But if they keep he, the he same might, damn paint. I did read something about he was a, like how creative he was. Oh, yeah. I mean, I even remember I was showing you when he was Prince Dev, but he came out with like Joker, Bane. So, uh, I, I mean, showed you, you can switch right, Stephen. The entrances is him as Prince Debit. You saw yeah. him, right? Yeah. Um. Yeah, he is creative. So I mean, if he they let him keep doing different things every time, that'd be cool. But if they keep having him come out just the same way as he was at Revolution, I think it's not going to work. He'll be like a boogeyman or something. Yeah. I mean, he's he reminds me of like, are they trying to make him like Willow the w Willow or whatever? Like, I don't know what the, the way his body mannerisms were reminding me of Willow off TNA. Willow, yeah. He was, yeah. The theatrical part of it all, but anyway, Man, it was strange. Willow was, would be cool in WWE. Yeah, <laughs> I don't like like a lot of people don't like his gimmick, but whatever. But I think. Uh, and then Sami Zayn getting the title obviously was like a long time coming that we yeah, knew it was going to happen, and we knew sooner or later that that was going to happen. That so. was a good match, and it was a hell of a match. And yeah, I said, and he done that was a reverse Frankenstein or something. Like he oh, that was head. that was the Adrian Neville that reverse Frankenstein. Yeah. That was crazy. Like he really dropped him on his head. Yeah, the matches every time Sami Zayn's in a match, it's like five stars though. So. The old dive to the What'd you think of that, Steven? Yeah, I like Sammy Zane, man. He's a good talent. He really is. Yeah, he needed the belt. More than Neville, in my opinion. Yeah, that dive no, through the ropes. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I hope yeah. he gets called up soon. Yeah, because he dropped the belt. He needs to be called up soon. They'll so. probably, once they get a few more guys to sign up with NXT or to bring up, they'll probably put a few more guys up in the main roster. But, like, Triple H is, like, fighting against guys getting called, getting called up and wanting to make it more of, like, a but he's competition. he's got no choice because, I mean, some of them are going to want it. Yeah, he's got no choice because it's not really a competition. Plus, if you, the more guys you bring in, you're going to have to do something with some of the other guys to get... 
I kind of like time. his. I kind of like his view on making it a competition. Yeah, but then I mean, it's it's just not going to work that way with it being owned by Vince. Ultimately, except it's getting better than Raw. <laughs> it is better than Raw. <laughs> yeah, it is. Okay, so on to some of the rumors before we close it out. Here we have um, Austin. What what do you have? Was free? Oh yeah, Austin on his interview, which was a cool ass interview, yeah. by the way. That podcast that they had with him and Austin and Vince that was good. That was good. And uh, I guess he was free to ask any questions that he wanted, which I thought WWE was yeah cool smart him on letting that, him yeah. do that and not hold him back from asking like CM Punk questions and stuff like they thought. All right. Did you watch that podcast, Steven? Yes, I did. I uh, did. I enjoyed it. Yeah. I really did. I did laugh, you know, like when you kind of like listen to the CM Punk one and then you like listen to what you said about CM Punk. Um, you know, because CM Punk did one before that podcast and then he did the second one after the Stone Cold one. So he kind of like responded to what Vince had to say. And I totally believe CM Punk when he said, you know, like he fully knew that he fired me on my wedding day and he knew. You know, and then Vince is like, no, well, it was coincidence you know I, I just I think it's kind of funny because WWE would do that they just, they just would I think they would too yeah yeah like they just they always have to have the, the upper hand you know what I mean like they oh they want to own you just like they want to own names I mean they just do oh, I hate I hate yeah, how yeah. they won't let people use their names uh, it's... Uh, yeah I hate that too that totally ruins a lot of the prestige of somebody when they can't use their name. Right. So. Yeah. Until they get to the Hall of Fame, then they can use it. Right. Um, I guess if Undertaker wrestles at Mania, that he's going to end up taking on Bray Wyatt, is what they're claiming right now. Which, I called yeah. this last year that he should have been the one to break the streak. Probably it'd be Wyatt. Yeah. The next yeah. dead man type guy. But they had Brock do it, so I don't. I don't understand the feud really. Like him to come back to face Wyatt right now. They should have done well, the Sting. Could still build up his character, you know. They should should have done Sting. Yeah, though. but if they're gonna have know. Sting and Triple H, why not have Sting and Taker? In my opinion, I don't know. They're gonna put him against the young guy. Unless they think Taker will wrestle again, they might want to build up and. A little bigger, but and and we mentioned that yeah. they added Lesnar back onto the last draw before Royal Rumble after they pulled him off the advertisement. Um, well, uh, WrestleMania 32 is going to be held at the Cowboy Stadium. Yeah, that'd be cool in Texas. I think that'll be neat, man. It's going to be one hell of a crowd there. Oh man, I think oh, they'll be man. packed. They'll be packed in there for a record-setting crowd, in my opinion. Yeah, I um, Dallas. And then on like a on the final note, uh, reunion planned for what is it? The nineteenth of January. January yeah. Did you hear about this, Stephen? They're going to bring back uh, HBK, uh, and it looks like another NWO reunion. Nash Hall and Hogan are all advertised, I and know. HBK. So kind the whole like a click, click, a click NWO, NWO, NWO reunion. Yeah, man, that's the one Lesnar is supposed to be on. Lesnar. Was supposed well, to be on there. They, they pulled him, him and put him now. Put him back and now on. put him back on there. So hopefully Lesnar shows up on that one because maybe. they're saying it's probably going to be an old school role. Maybe he'll come spoil their party. Yeah. And that's the last one before Royal Rumble, and he could come spoil their party again. You're yeah. right. Oh, speaking of Hogan, he, he got physical. Hogan got physical. Hogan got physical on SmackDown. Did you see that, Stephen? No, I didn't. They had a bunch of guys come run down and attack him and. Um, was it Cena? Yeah. And he actually Cena got physical and, and started Rowan throwing punches. Them. Yeah, Rowan and all them came down and helped, but he was throwing punches, man. He so was he must physical. have passed his physical. He had to have because they wouldn't even let him throw no. a punch before he because he didn't pass the physical. Maybe him and Stone Cold are going to wrestle. <laughs> That'd be awesome to get him and Austin at Mania. Yeah. Speaking of Austin, it's his 50th birthday yep. today, so happy, happy birthday, birthday, Stone, Stone Cold. Cold. Oh, hell yeah. So he's 50 years old today. I love his podcast, by the way. Yeah. Dude, his, his podcasts are the best when it's either just him or it's him and his buddy Ted Fowler. Because when he has his buddy Ted Fowler, he acts more like a jackass and more funny. You know, like, when he has guests on, I don't enjoy them as much. I really don't. He's pretty I, I like serious, you know. Bullshit. 
Yeah, he don't really mess around. He's just straight to the questions on his yeah. guests. I like listening to he's his He's got inter- good questions. I, I like his interviews, though, yeah, because you get knows. to know the wrestlers that he's talking to and kind of go through the... It's almost like a little documentary on their life, like a biography. He knows what the fans are thinking. He really gets down to the bottom line points on some stuff. He knows what the fans are thinking. He, that's the questions. Are right. By the way, Zion's unofficial sponsor. <laughs> Drink fueling two, us through the episode a day. I'd probably have <laughs> but uh, other than that, I think that's gonna wrap the episode up for this week. Uh, hopefully, yeah, we're gonna be back here next yeah. week to do it like this again because I kind of like oh, doing uh, it live now, right face to face. And Steven goes. Hopefully, Steven can get down here maybe in a yeah. few weeks and do it live with us. Because I know you wanted yeah. to come down anyway, Steven. Yeah, uh, I mean, yeah. the K season. Yeah. That's that's awesome, man. yeah. So. Yeah, you can go up to Casey's and meet the chick, man. I want to uh, talk about True Car. <laughs> oh, yeah. Can we talk about True Car Auto? No, I'm joking. I hate that on the podcast. At least on YouTube, we don't have to worry about them going into the True Car Auto ad. Or... Yeah. Dude, okay. JR's recent podcast with Jeff Jarrett, it was okay. I really didn't enjoy that one, but okay. The first, dude, Jeff Jarrett did not come on until like the 1050 mark. And that 1050 was full of nothing but ads. The first 10 minutes of JR's podcast, that is bad. Jeez. <laughs> I haven't listened to it yet, but uh, the ads are ridiculous on them podcasts, man. We got to do this so we can keep it free, you know? <laughs> Yeah, this, money, this show's yeah, going I good. I, just, like I think I'd rather pay a dollar and listen to them ads, man. Buzz kills. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I don't like I don't those think, ads at all. No, I don't think they are hurting for money. Mm. Well, I think that's going to bring it to the end. I don't have anything else to say to you guys. Nope. No. Not much going on in TNA or R- oh, TNA on Destination America. Good luck. Yeah. If you can so find I got, that station. Yeah, that's, yeah, I'm saying good luck to TNA. <laughs> And uh, or somebody with some money would buy them. And- ROH, I really haven't heard nothing on them lately, except they have had some good matches lately. Uh, Evan they Bourne, do, yeah. Evan Bourne, Evan uh, Alberto, Del- Alberto Del Rio signed a contract with them, so he's working Evan as. Evan Bourne, AJ was good. I can't remember the name he's working yeah. as. But check uh, it out. Yeah, Airborne and uh, AJ had a hell of a match. So we're gonna say. Peace out. Till next time, guys. Episode 8 is over. Next week, episode 9. Um, Steven, you got anything to say? Nope. No, no. All right. Well, I'm going to say peace out, guys. Peace. Till next week. We'll see you later. Back here again. Thanks for watching. Later, guys. Later.